Okay guys, I'm back and we are now going to make this um, tiny little mini envelope as a bonus. So for this one you will need, excuse me, I apologise, for this one you will need a small sheet of music paper. This has just come out of a box standard size book. I bought it all in a big pa in a big bundle but this is like a a bog standard size reading book size you will need a ruler some glue some scissors and then something to embellish so these to embellish now let's get started and it is exactly the same principle as well the same kind of not principle but method as the big one i'll use my big ruler that one's not big enough so let me see which side am I going to use. Doesn't matter. Let's just go around it. So again, lining up and tearing. And in this one, we're going to use these cutoffs to make that little paper ruffle. Anchor. Closure anchor, whatever you want to call it. We will use these thicker bit. These, this. Again, I'm not going to bother about the little bumpy patterns on the side of that, which I didn't in the no saw version. Okay, so I'll pop them to one side. And then again, just like the others, this one works out nice actually. Now this one was a little bit easier to try and decide which way up I wanted it because it all goes one way anyway. So, you need to decide which you want to be your front and which you want to be the back of your envelope. Now, I wanted this bit to be the front of my envelope, and as my music notes are going that way, the folded, but the folded part is going to be my front. So, I needed it so that when I fold upwards, the music notes are going in the right direction. So that meant I needed to flip my paper upside down. Can you see? If I keep it that way, when I flip up, they are upside down. And that's going to be the front. So if I turn it upside down and flip up, that then becomes the, the right way around. It's it's complicated. <laughs> it is that. We, we won't go into much detail on that. And then... All I did with this was to, where did I go? There? Yeah. Let's go to here. Again, well, I can't use these lines this time, so I need to use these. I'm going to go to that one. Let's just make a nice thin one. And then fold this, I'm going to use this line here as a guide. So fold that down like that. And we have a nice tiny envelope with the music notes going the right way. Because this is the front, doesn't matter about the inside. And the back, we're going to cover up anyway. Okay, so now we're going to embellish. We're not going to glue, we're going to embellish. Embellish first, then sew. Like I said, remember this one is going to be another sewing one. Doesn't have to be, but I'm going to sew this one. So with this one I used a circle embellishment and I'm using embellishments here from Tracy Fox, Love Junk Journals, Mini Floral Embellishments. And I used a circle embellishment and then I used a little square one, rectangle one actually, um, in place of the tag. But I think this time I might actually use a tag. Oh no, 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 I didn't use a tag because they're too big. Right. So, although, no, yeah, they are too big. <laughs> Right, so I am going to stick with these and I'm stuck for choice now because I've only got two circle embellishment 
pots that I can use and I think I like the blue one so I am going to atrociously cut this blue one out. I don't do well with circles and I don't have a circle punch big enough to do the job for me. So I shall cut it out by hand horrendously. Um, I did mention in the other video, I didn't mention during the video, but I mentioned in the video description when I was writing the materials list that I do not ink in these videos. You may do that. There is absolutely nothing at all stopping you from inking your work before you glue, before you sew, before you stick, before you do anything. That is an absolute personal preference and it is entirely up to you guys. I am not against it, but I just do not do well with inking. Um, unfortunately, me and inking don't go well together. Um, I always get it wrong. These, I don't feel like they need them. They've already been inked and on the edges, so I don't need to. But yeah, I do ink, but sometimes I just prefer not to because I'm, I can't get it right. I'm going to use this little blue one, which actually matches that one anyway. Um, but yeah, I, for some reason I can't get it right. I get, I just make a complete and utter mess of it when I ink. Um, so unless I'm going for something that's a really grungy look, I tend not to ink where I can help it. And on these, I didn't want to. But you, by all means, ink until your heart is content. Ink distress whatever you want to call it like i said these kits of traces are great because she's already inked them beforehand so i don't feel like i need to go around the edges to emphasize them anymore and there you go and that is all we're going to do and then i will zoom you in a little bit and then try and remember where you are um i shall be back in a second guys Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry guys. I really I needed to go to the toilet. <laughs> I've never had that happen before whilst I'm filming. I've had the phone go, I've had people knock on the door, I've had, you know, I've been forgot to lock the door and I've been disrupt disrupted. I've never needed to stop filming midway to go to the toilet. I apologize. Anyway, this one is a little bit easier. We're not going to cut first and stick it underneath. We are going to just glue it down. So, we're not going to glue the envelope down, we're going to glue this down. <clears throat> so, I shall get my... Oh, hang on. Did I? How did I do it? Oh, no, I did. Hang on. Sorry, we're not going to glue that to that at all. We're going to cut. Okay, so... Line it up. I am using the music notes as a rough guide like I did before. And I need to try and get this the right way up. No, we are going to glue. We are going to glue. Sorry guys, I've just remembered. Oh, honestly. I knew we had to glue. Glue. <laughs> we're going to glue the top part on. That's what we're going to do. So, But we still need to kind of measure a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little thumbnail mark on there. And then I know where to glue to. Although it doesn't really matter anyway. So we're just going to glue this top half. Then we're going to put it on the envelope. And the good thing about Uhu glue is you have time to manoeuvre. Sorry, yes I am still in frame. It's not perfectly straight but it'll, it will do. Right, there. So we glue that top part on and then with this flap still open we cut across. 
literally just across that line. That's okay, I managed to miss it. If you still have glue, sorry, if you still have glue on there, then don't use your best scissors, use your gluey scissors or whatever. I've actually managed to miss that bit, so, and cut that bit off. I love these scissors, guys. Thank you so much for some people suggesting them, uh, although they were actually an accidental purchase. Um, but they're awesome. I love them. I was a little unsure about them to begin with. I thought I'm not going to get on with these, but oh, I really, really do love them. And then, oh, perfect. Look at that. I can line that up with that line there. We're going to glue the bottom. And in this instance, we actually do want it to pretty much meet. We we don't want any bits hiding underneath like we did the, with the material. We do kind of want it to pretty much meet up. So then you close that down. I'm in camera, I'm not focus though. Thank you. And then try and match it up. Which is difficult for me because I instinctively want to stick my head right over what I'm doing. But I can't because then I'll be in camera. So this may not line up exactly how I want it to. But yes, this is where Uhu or glue stick glue comes in really, really useful because you have time to manoeuvre. And there you go. That's glued down. So there you have it. And then this will then, I'm going to put it. Where am I going to put it? Probably up there like that. Before we do that. I haven't cut that straight. There's a little corner bit there and it's bugging me. That's better. I mean, don't even think that's straight either. Right, so that's probably going to line up there with that top bit there. And then I need a paper ruffle there. So. No, we didn't use that. We used, right, we didn't use that scrap. We used this little thin scrap. So again, I'm just going to ruffle this four times, yeah, seems to be about right. Oh my gosh, having trouble focusing. Let me zoom you back out and then I'll come up. Nope. It's having trouble focusing because of the stuff in the background. So we will fold come on this is not like you come on and this one won't work like my other one why are you not focusing come on honestly thank you wow that took some doing anyway right one fold Two fold, three and four. Is that right, width wise? Yeah, that's fine. And then just tear a bit off. I'm not going to mess about. Actually, that could be a little bit wide. See, that's not too bad. Just oh, it is a lot wider than that one. Three, four. Oh, honestly, I'm losing the ability to make paper ruffles now, which is not even difficult. Right, one. 
two, three, four. Oh my gosh, I know that was so much easier. Like, honestly, how difficult was that? It's not liking the stuff in the background. Right, so we've just made a little paper ruffle. And then again, I will show you how to glue it. So, because we're going to glue this one, not sew it. So, where that crease is there, you want to glue just here. That inside bit. And then again, where that bit folds onto there, glue it. And again, yeah, I know it's all coming undone, but it will stick together at the end. Glue it on there, like that, and then turn it over and again, do that little piece, that little piece. that little piece and that little piece you will know yourselves when you're doing it which bits need to be glued because obviously you need it to be glued flat so you will know this paper has been a pest so I will just this phone has been a pest today I don't normally have this trouble with this phone There we go. Right, there we are. It it was glued, I've just unglued it. <laughs> okay. Patience and perseverance. Not my best forte. Right. And then We will sew this on first and we will glue that at the end. That's a little bit wide, but we'll cut some off in a minute. Okay, so I'll take you to the sewing machine now, guys. And we are back over at the sewing machine. So you need your little label and you need your envelope. Open your envelope flat, because obviously you do not want to sew that shut. And then we're just going to go around it. And because this is only a tiny envelope, I'm going to go around it with a straight stitch. Um, we shall start on the inside. And I hope that's right. Ooh, not bad. <laughs> so then. too bad. I'm being heavy footed today. And back stitch a couple of times. I'm not going to sew across the bottom as like I did with the large envelope. You just lose space. It looks nice and everything, but you're just losing some storage space. And as this is only a small envelope, we obviously want as much storage as we can get. So I will not waste it by sewing across the bottom. And as you can tell, my sewing especially because it's like three foot in. <laughs> you know, it, it's probably like a quarter of an inch in. Um, that is a lot of space to lose in a tiny little envelope like this, so I will not sew across the bottom. Oh, come on. My thread is not happy today. So, let me just refer back to the small one again. Oh, right, yes, 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 I'm going to say, did we sew? But we do sew across the front here, at the front flap here, because we're going to sew that to the flap anyway. 
so what you want to do now is line get that where you want it to be and I suggest you saw that first and sew it on straight because that is not on straight at all um, I sewed it quite low down. Yes, it does want to be fairly low down. So I'm going to line it up with this line here. Lift your flap up and your flap obviously do not sew with your flap shut because you will sew your envelope shut. And I'm going to put that there on the inside of the edge stitching, but obviously I'm going to roughly center it between the edge of this embellishment and that stitching so and then I'm going to not line it up with the top but here along oh no I've already done that right sorry I should have sewn that before right well it doesn't matter I'm an idiot guys I'm forgetting how I've done my own thing. This line here, I should have sewn this on, this on when I did this here, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do now is bypass all that, ignore all that, and we're just going to sew this little thing on here. So we can actually come up a bit and do this one slightly different and just sew this little tab on. That's it. So, and I'm actually going to zigzag that little tiny bit. So where are we? Sewing machine wise. And I'm doing this bit by hand. That little bit, just lining it up a lot. Okay, keep it straight. Sewing wise, we are done. So, I'm going to pop you back over to the desk. Okay, back over to the desk, and we are done. We are actually like pretty much done. So, we made a little alteration to this one to what I did with the original one because what I did with the original one was when I sewed the envelope to begin with so when I was the envelope open and I was sewing around it I went from the bottom that way then I sewed the tab on whilst I was going across there and to the bottom and this one I haven't sewn across the bottom either but with this one I didn't do that, I'd already sewn across it first, so then I went back in and then just zigzagged across that. Actually, it really needs to be anchored down there too. Oh no! What I also did was backed it on some card stock to make it stronger, which I haven't done on this one. So this embellishment does not matter. It it's just on normal printer paper and it doesn't matter about it being thick. This, however, because it's going to be used as a flap, needs to be reinforced. So, back it on card or make sure it is some form of card stock. Okay, I'm not going to mess about now. And then this, I'm just going to put a, tie, a little bit off the edges here and here to make it smaller. And then with the envelope shut, again, we're just going to glue along this very bottom edge. The same as we did with the other one. So just a tiny little bit of glue across the bottom edge. And then that will be used to anchor that. And take that out and then you don't glue it shut. Wait for that to dry and then when it's dry you then use that <laughs> it's not going to go in now oh well it does yeah okay as your closure for that okay 
and then turn it over and embellish the back if you so desire which I am going to do on this one just as an extra little bonus Oh, honestly, what is it today? Mistakes. I'm getting good at this. Making mistakes, not tutorials. I'm hoping to get better at tutorials, but, you know. Thing is, they only get better with practice. So, I'll just clear some of this stuff away now. And we're going to use some ephemera, so I'm going to get out my handy dandy little ephemera case, which is a CD case. I've done a video on this already. Um, I say already; it might not be, it might not, you might not be able to watch it just yet. I can't remember when it's scheduled for, but anyway, um, we'll stick to the same thing. Not the same labels, but the same thing. It's all Tracy kit, basically. Um, so, that's a Tracy label and that is one of Tracy's Fussy Cut Butterflies. So we will stick with the same kind of kit. And let's find a butterfly that we like. What have we used on that side? Blue, haven't we? Right, so we actually could have done with a blue butterfly. There is a blue one here. No, it's not blue. It's got blue in it, but it's not blue. Um, I actually really like that one. That's, that'll do. It's not blue, but it's got a bit of bluey turquoise in it. That will do. And, yes, I'm going to cut some of it off, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I say, I don't think the video's up yet, but I bought a CD case, a CD wallet case to use as an ephemera, ephemera case. So, let's see now which label we're going to use. So I've used a blue one, a blue on the front. Can't use that, they're too big. Wrong shape as well. I suppose we could do another especially for you. Or how about a return one that might be, yeah. Let's do that. Yes, let's do that. So this is come from from that was Tracy Fox's Love Junk Journals um, Fussy Cut Butterflies and then this return label has come from Tracy's address labels kit and like I said Tracy can be found over at Love Junk Journals and the link to her shop is below YouTube and shop and stuff is below um, I don't like inking I'm not going to ink I'm actually just going to quickly get rid of this white space roughly because I don't want to ink I don't like inking especially on camera so and as I was saying guys thank you so much for the suggestion of these scissors they are awesome especially for fussy cutting which is what I wanted them for um, I do have other scissors that I use for bog standard projects like for cutting paper and stuff I wanted some scissors for fussy cutting and everybody seems to be using these and I actually made them as an accidental purchase they was in my basket I'd ummed and ahed about them for a while and then I thought no I really don't like the idea of them I think they're going to be rubbish um, but yeah so I kept them in my basket but I was supposed to click on the save for later option and I didn't and they were still in my basket and I had no idea they were still in my basket until I actually come to order something and um, they turned up. I'm going to cut its antenna off because I'm not fussed. I'll draw them on 
I forgot to do it on that one, but I'll draw them on. I haven't got time for fussing about with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't realise until they actually turned up. I'd, I'd ordered a few different things, so I didn't really take notice of how much it cost. <laughs> and then they turned up and I was like, what are they doing there? What, where, how have I ended up with them? I'm sure I didn't order them. When I went back to have a look at purchases, surely enough, they was in there. So... <laughs> accidental purchase but what an awesome accidental purchase they are amazing the reason i wanted some new scissors is i've hurt my thumb um i've actually trapped a nerve in my thumb through fussy cutting awesome guys yes i use these scissors for fussy cutting or i had been doing and i am really bad with scissors when it comes to cutting um although i start off using them like that eventually they end up all the way down there because I have a habit of gripping too hard and in this instance these ones ended up down there and I can feel it now this part of the scissors the under part of this although the the rubber and soft grip um, has been hitting here on my thumb and there's a nerve there there at that part of your thumb there's actually a nerve and here can actually still see a very faint mark across my thumb there where I've well you could if my camera would focus what is going on with this camera today yeah you can see just a faint mark there but like I said across here you have a nerve which you're probably not aware of and if you touch it sends shooting pains like tingling pins and needles oh the door okay sorry door went it was the postman um but yes um here you're probably not always aware of it but you have a nerve <laughs> there and um the the handles have been pushing on that and when you push on that too hard it shoots it sends like tingling pins and needles sensation up the end of your thumb and the end of my thumb is numb um it's not too bad now because it's still swollen um it's been like that for a few weeks now and it's actually still a little bit swollen and um, so every time even just doing that I'm only touching I'm not even pushing I'm just tapping and the end of my thumb is tingling like pins and needles so I needed I still needed to be able to cut but I needed some scissors to use that weren't going to interfere with it and these are great because these don't touch that nerve they I don't hold them so that they're touching there, I hold them so that they're on the inside of my palm there and they're awesome. So I can still fussy cut and cut other things and what have you without interfering with my thumb but yes my thumb is tingling like crazy now and the end of it's gone numb again. So and there's nothing I can do, nothing you can do about it other than just rest and wait for it to the swelling to go down because that's what it like I said it's it's swollen so it's tingling it doesn't do it all the time but only like when I hit it or touch it which I've just done with the scissors and then then so yeah depressing oh I've got two labels there okay and now I'm going to use the oohoo glue I don't know whether it's said pronounced oohoo or yoohoo Fagman always says oohoo when he uses this for different things, so. Like wet glue. Now, let's see. Let's just line that up with some of these lines. And stick that on there. And then the same with the butterfly. Let's just glue him on. I love butterflies, guys. Oh dear me, we're going to lose quite a bit of him. Him, her, whatever. Sorry. Sorry guys, anybody who's not happy about these things, look away now. And I will just quickly use these scissors to get rid of that bit. Sorry butterfly. Okie dokie. And there we go. So there we have another. Oh, I'll cut. This 
a lot bigger than this one but anyway and there we have another dinky dinky envelope so oh, that should have been reinforced oh i can't believe i made such a silly schoolgirl error error it will still work but i'll just have to be careful although because i've sewn it up there i suppose i could actually glue some cardstock just under there and reinforce it and then sew across there that might be the best way to go i won't do it here on camera but that might be the best way to go about that because it does need reinforcing because as it is like this i can't use it it'll just tear um but yeah but that is how you make the tiny envelope which just goes to show as i've said in previous ones you do not need big pieces of music paper to make the same envelope and instead of using paper embellishments there you could use material like we've done on this one just on a smaller scale you know you could replicate this exact with the material and the tags just on a smaller scale with a smaller square of material and a smaller tag but I did this I did this one because I was going to use it in a project and then I thought right well okay let's do another one so there we have it guys and that marks the end of the music paper tutorials for August and September this is going to be this video now although it's a tutorial from last month this is now September's tutorial Thursday so there you go guys <laughs> happy days happy tutorial day and now I will be back on track for next month. I have a whole month, well, half a month, about three weeks now to figure out a tutorial for October. I already have one in mind, actually. But yes, so there you go. Barbara, again, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye. Hi guys, just back again quickly. Um, I've just been taking all the mini videos that we did. Um, off the phone and putting them onto the computer and watching them back to check which order they were in because the um, Computer I don't know why it's very random. Well, actually some of the videos had, had flipped from being this way Which is landscape to being that way portrait So I had to edit them to in the phone app to rotate them So it put them on the computer in random order So I had to watch them back to see which order they should have gone in to number them and I realized I didn't show you why that your needle had to be in the left hand side when you come to flip your paper around doing the sewing for the gale trick. Um, so I've just popped back on quickly to show you and it's basically just so it gives a nice neat corner uh, when you're flipping around. Um, you can't even really see it properly on here because the stitching is very close in colour to the paper but there can you see it just gives you that right nice little corner neat edge on the corner again there there instead of a messy corner <laughs> basically that's it really guys so just it you know just wanted to show you see it there again as well on that corner and then there on that corner but yeah you get a really nice neat finish instead of this like bird's nest tangled mess kind of an edge you just get a right nice smooth turn around so that's <laughs> that's it really guys but the fact that I hadn't shown you that um, really bugged me and I thought somebody is bound to ask what was the reasoning behind that <laughs> so I just figured I'd come back on and show you and I'm quite impressed with how many of these we've got going on now and how how well it turned out I've just been watching the videos back and they're actually nowhere near as bad as I thought they were going to be <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching guys and again I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it wasn't too difficult to follow along. Um, I hope 
well actually watching it back i found that doing it in the sections like i did seemed a bit better me watching it back watching myself film it i knew i mean i was feeling more comfortable whilst i was filming but watching it back i, I could see that i was more, i felt more comfortable what uh, filming it so i think i'm going to try that method a bit more in other videos and especially when i'm doing tutorials because it does cut down the length of time i my my mind wanders and i waffle on about other things um and it does make me focus more on what i'm doing so yes thank you so much for watching guys and i will see you soon goodbye